look under my head shop, how may I assist you? If you follow me right this way, you will see we have 12 different, I mean, th th this is different stacks. 12 different B-dubs player heads, and they're all on display for you to see with different rarities and such. You know what, actually? There's one. This one probably needs to be out on display. I think right here. Yes, 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 yes. The old bald B-dubs. That's from a while ago. Uh, on a couple seasons ago, and I don't know if anybody ever, ever even saw it, but it's a rare one. Today, we are going to install the rarity machine. But before we do, there's something at my base. Yes, we're, but we're going to do it. It's going to be a whole cool redstone contraption over there. But as I've been uh, flying back and forth to the base, I saw something very interesting. A prize from Etho. B-dubs, I know you love horses. I have a special one for you. Hello? Thank you very much. He knows. Speedy Supreme. A speed horse. I love it. Okay. Let's see how fast. Oh, God. <laughs> no. No. Hold on. Forgive all the things on the ground. This test the speed. Six. If you remember Lulu from last season, Lulu was 11 and like not, not that fast. This is half that almost. Yeah, me and Mora's at 12. Twice as fast. Still, I mean, this isn't even the fastest you can get. Pretty fast horse still though. Oh man, I miss horsing. Well, this is a very special horse. It's going to stay right here for a little while because uh, until we find something to do with it. We've got many projects today. I'm shop crazy. I'm really a shop crazy boy. I've got, look at all this. I've got all this filled with materials to the brim because we're making another shop back here. Those of you that have been watching the, you, the peeper members, you've seen, you, you already know a little bit about what we're, I mean, kind of everything about what we're going to do, but uh, it'll be a surprise for you that are not. If you'd like to see how I build off camera, you can become a member. Hit the join button below, or there's a link down in the description. We've been having a lot of fun on those off-camera streams, but I have, I mean, I've been doing so much head collecting, as you can see. That's a lot of, um, that's a lot of deaths right there. And I need to do a lot more, I think. But follow me down into this manhole, and I show you this is where the rarity system's going to be. So it's going to pick a rare, we'll have... Uh, you know, yep. You know what? I think this will be a lot better explained if we make this a redstone with beetles. There, now I have my teacher hat on. So let me show you. I'm going to make one. We're going to, there's five of these and I'll just make one right now. This right here will have a, uh, like a sword in it and it'll have a piece of dirt. From there, there will be a comparator. And that comparator will test how the, the signal strength. If it's just a piece of dirt, then that means it won't pass the test and it'll move on to the next thing. If it's a sword, it'll send out two signal strengths and it'll trigger the dropper that will be right here. So far, so perfect. So then we need to set up the thing to say, okay, if, if we succeeded, then we, wait, what do I do here? Okay, we'll, we'll do, this is the input into the next one. So, you know, there'd be a repeater here, right? That, that triggers this whole thing. So from here we go like this and like this. That's a clock, I accident. We go like this and like, and then like this. And then like this and this. And I think, I think that's right. Now you may be asking yourself, how do you do this? And by the way, this is a, a Suzuma and Etho patented project. They they <laughs> they made this and, and showed me how to do this thing. So, aha, we don't want those to connect. We want them straight like that. So we put two blocks like this, just as Suzuma and Etho did. This is their pat my patented thing that, I, that they made. Uh, and this is it. This is it. The, the system is done. So we'll just make a little button here. And I put some sort, give me that button back. I put a sword in here. And it's sword in here. So, and then we'll put some items in here. Yes, we'll put dirt in there and granite in there. Wonderful. So if we get granite, we know that 
we went to the second one. This is it. And it went to the first one. All right. We're putting stone in there now. Okay. And shoot. And the second one, and it passed the test. So the way you control the rarity is how often does it pass the test? We don't want the first one to pass the test very often and move on to the next one. You know, and then we want it even harder to go get here and harder to get here and harder to get here. And then we'll also control some of the rarity through how many of a certain head is in each one. And it's balanced perfectly. And that was officially my most perfect redstone with beat up segment ever. All right. I'm cracked. Oh my. Okay. That might have been really loud. So, all right. I have made the perfect system. Oh, yes. It's a system that Suzuma made. Hey, hey, shout out right now to Suzuma because he helped make this thing. And on top of that, he has been on the server and didn't care. I was very nervous because, you know, when I'm collecting my own player head, it goes a little something like this. I showed this in the last episode, but just in case, I switched to offhand. I found it's more efficient to just use the two ball rockets, a kablamo, and now I wither. There it have it. There I have it. I'm down here now. Oh, good thing I just have my spawn. But that message you see in the chat there, <laughs> that popped up like hundreds of times, and he he was fine with it. He wasn't upset. What a sweet angel. What a sweet angel for putting up for the, with this. But here we go. So I have a bunch of shulker boxes, weighted. These are called weighted, I'm inventing. They're called weighted shulker boxes, and they all have a shovel and 55 items. Most of them, it's just 55 stone. It's a free gift for anyone that would like to. Oh, hopefully these are all, okay, this is fine, this is fine. We're just gonna fill it. We're gonna fill the system. All these have a shovel, and 55 items. Yes, it's a gift, but it's also a weight to help. Once this gets the this the Spencer's going to shoot the shulker right here. Once it gets five player heads in, this signal gets strong enough to trigger this piston and then pop it off and send it into here. And then it will go into a dropper here and connect to a dropper elevator that goes up to the top into a barrel where you will receive to start it, as you can see, I've got all of these kind of weighted, weighted, weighted out. And I have all these weighted out. So, it should be good to go. Once I push this, it'll create a signal long enough to get five triggers out of this thing. It'll be one, two, three, four, five. And it'll shoot five signals. So, we'll get five player heads. Did you know Beano could do this? Watch. Here it comes. Oh, there's going to be five player heads in here. Yep, and that's five. And listen, that tray goes a couple times, and that's fine. That's fine. But up we go, and the shulker should be in here with our prize. Yes, with five B double O heads. Yeah, five B double O heads, and not great rarity, but that's okay. So that's the system. That's how it works. I got it working. I'm so proud of I. Five diamonds for... No, four diamonds for a random pack of five heads and a shulker. Congratulations. Plus, plus some other goodies, actually. They'll get the shovel and all that stuff. I've written up a full book. I, I realized I wasn't done. I had to set up and i gotta get a different block for under there that looks maybe like oil dripping right we can we can let that fly but now oh i gotta make a trap door here as well this says this is basically an explainer of how it works okay i didn't know that would make it that trap door move that's hilarious okay basically telling them you know hey come over here well first come over here put four diamonds in then come over here and Hit the hubcap or press the button. When you press the button, your heads will be delivered in this. And I'll put a birch trap door on this. In a second, we should see it coming. Please, please, please. Yes, and that makes enough noise. And there we go, we got five. Did we get any ultra rares? Yeah, ooh, 
Ooh, that's a pretty rare one. So this is the B-dubs toothless, which if we look in the manual here with the rarity list, we have the list of commons. I'll buy them back five for one diamond for the moss cloak, but you know, it's kind of hard to explain like, I know what all these are, but like, Shades, you know, I you gotta use words to explain them. But the toothless B dubs turn in one, get three diamonds. Pretty good deal. So uh I would have almost made my money back there. But if I turn all this other stuff in, you know, keep collecting, maybe maybe we get a big winner. The big prize is the side face B dubs. Ten diamonds, if you get that, which is right there. Ooh, it's an ultra rare. But I think we have the system all set up now. Woo! Finally! That's a lot of redstone in that food truck right there. But I think it's going to be awesome. I'm excited. But before we proceed, let's take a quick commercial break. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love my everyday earbuds. I wear them all the time. I mean, here's the thing. Everybody knows about the eight hours of playtime. They know about the 32 hours of battery life and that they're half the price of other premium brands. But literally just the other day, I started discovering these extra features. So if I hold the left side for three seconds, boom, different uh, custom audio profile. But the really good one, okay, here, here's, this one's awesome. So on the right side, if I hold this for three seconds, I'm able to switch from awareness mode to noise isolation mode. Sometimes the wife and kids, they'll be upstairs, they'll be screaming, you know, dad, dad, dad. I don't want to hear that. So all I have to do is just three seconds and boom, nice noise isolation. It's just me and my music. Incidentally, the other day, my wife, she was moving some furniture and she got stuck under one of the chairs and she actually did need my help. Well, luckily, one of the neighbors a couple doors down was able to hear her yelling and they were able to come and help her. So it was fine. Uh, but the noise uh, isolation mode is really a fantastic feature I've been enjoying. Head on over to buyraycon.com slash bdubs or click on the link down in the description for 15% off of your purchase. Now it's time to move on to our other project. We finished the bdubs head shop. I'll send an announcement to the hermits and people can start flooding on in. I can't believe it's working. I'm so happy. So, Impulse's big thing is growing off in the distance. His empire building. It's gorgeous. Uh, the You are going to see this a lot today. You know, these squids that are flying up in the sky over at the uh, Oxalotl shop. So, just ignore. I'm, they're, they're in... The squids are in some bubble stream getting shoot up. So... We're going to put this building right here. It's going to kind of attach to this, uh, our Maso Manos building here and come out this way. And it's going to be pretty big. So I laid out in grass so you can see, you know, very clearly against the grass that the building will go like this. So we'll have a little bit of a bridge that'll come through here. I want to have this road still be a walkway. And so there will be a covered roof area here and then a little bit of a building here and then the big building is here and, and this is the corner so it comes all the way back here it's much bigger than i was anticipating and it'll probably come all the way up to here this is gonna be a big build i don't know if i can finish this today i might i oh, will finish it today we're going to sell we're selling mud that's right wet dirt that might be the name of the shop. I was asking in one of the off-camera members-only streams, I was asking, what are we going to name this thing? The, the, the best they came up with, I think, was Wet Dirt. Uh, which is funny. <laughs> I like that for a mud shop. Wet Dirt. Uh, we're going to go kind of a coffee shop style interior. Competing with the other coffee shop on the server selling potions. And we're going to model it based off of a Studio Ghibli house. And I want to take this moment to say I'm not a weeb, okay? I may know what Studio Ghibli is, and I may have seen this film, and I think it was uh, Howl's Moving Castle that this building is in. But that's all I know. I got an art book. <laughs> I got an art book from... That's the most weebyish. Okay, I have an art book for... All right. Yeah. 
I had some pictures that I thought were really cool, and, and we kind of modeled off of some reference. So uh, I thought that build building would fit in really nicely right here. So I'm gonna get started on building that, and uh, you can keep you can make fun of me. an overhang on this roof if you raised your hand i scold thee we don't do overhangs baby there's creeper back here hello hello good sir don't blow up oh interested in buying some b-dubs head huh get out of here get lost why don't b-dubs why don't beat up do overhang <laughs> because because i got a new toy and it's called blocks with color and depth and see from a distance because we put dark blocks up against the roof it looks like an overhang oh yes a texturing masterpiece that's what we're going for yeah we could do overhangs i actually did in a, in a, the the off camera stream i did do overhang it did look a little better uh, but i like i like this i saved on uh, 15 logs so wonderful here's the outside the outside. Round the outside. We're kind of done. I have road to fix over here. And we got to fix this road and how this is laid out because the building ended up being so large. But it's easy. We'll just do a little jog over here. A little 45 degree angle. And then straight. And then 45 degree angle. I think I'll just slide. All, I'll replicate the signs and just slide it all, all over a little bit. Maybe. Or 45 degree angle. I don't know. Lots of different bushes. Here's a fun thing. I mean, we got, there's still more to do. This is certainly not done. So trust me, this is all going to look very pretty, but there are, I have some bushes in my backyard that get a little overgrown or that are very twiggy. And I think these could work pretty well for that. These are the, I can't think of the name. I'll take one. Of course, the mangrove roots. Yes, yes. The mangrove roots. They're really nice because they're kind of like a leaf with the, the, texture like that where you can see through but i had no idea fences connect to them so they kind of work for like a dense bush pattern now this was kind of quickly done I, I i think in the future we can do better stuff uh the reason why it was quickly done is because it's going to get very little i think i'll fix that one very little view time it's just a walk past thing so why would i spend it you know a half hour trying to work on something that you just walk past quickly. Uh, but I think the whole thing looks pretty good. Pretty good. Now, downstairs in this lower area, we are going to have production. This is where a lot of production will be, but not for mud. Mud will be on display. You can get your mud espresso uh, right, right off the... It's like a brew machine. I don't know exactly what it is, but... Here, I'll have some wheat growing, and then this will be an area to dry out the mud to make clay, which will then turn into terracotta. Those are all valuable things that I think the hermits would really like to buy. So, two ways up. Two ways up. Uh, and by the way, you know, I, I used that, um, that we uh, building as a reference, but I kind of took some liberties in some areas. Uh, so it's not exact, and, and the colors aren't exact, but I think we matched them up pretty well. We discovered that, hey, if we use the right colors, you know, and keep it all kind of like this brownish, orangish tone with the roof and stuff, we can get away with using gray in the walls, and it'll still look green. For the most part, if you see this from a distance, these, these boards look green. But the gray, I don't know, it's kind of cool. I like it, I like it. So there's two ways in. The very steep staircase right next to the Maso Mano sign. And you can come in here. And this is that bridge that goes over the road. Or there's another very steep staircase right here. Uh, so you could come in. This will be, be kind of closed off, this area here. And then this will be the coffee shop area. We'll have a roof on top of this and maybe some area to smell upstairs. But there's will be the bar. 
right here. A little porch. I think this will be good for hermits that are flying in. Hello? Hello? <laughs> He's having a day, isn't he? Uh, hermits that can fly, because those stairs might be annoying, so you just fly in right here. And uh, I'll, I'll have a bunch of barrels where they can buy everything. But if I'm here, check this out. Oh, I don't have any dirt. Um, This is El Mango's patented design that I just made. Custom by me. But exactly like him. So, Maso Manos, the thing, and then our mud shop is back there. Right over this way is Suzuma put up the depot, which is a cool place. So, it's just a bunch of bulk items, right? Cobblestone, stone. I mean, these are some of my most valuable items. I use these things more than anything. I use dirt and grass. And stone and cobblestone and andesite. I use all this stuff so much. Hello, baby. So this is very valuable. And basically, I've read the book. You take you take what you need and you leave something. So um, I'm going to take that and I'm going to leave uh, some scaffolding right now. Just for the sake of example. It's hard to judge. Dirt and scaffolding, you know, they're kind of the same. Somebody might find that valuable to say, oh, I need some scaffolding right now. But anyway, um, Il Mango's pad of design. So, basically, I, I built one of these on my single player, actually, and I made it a little different to where instead of it just going into a hopper, it kind of creates like a this cool blob thing. Very custom, very perfect. Uh, there are a bunch of water bottles, so many water bottles back here that will be refilling on their own in a water stream back there. And filling into this dispenser. Oh, there's a dispenser back there. Just trust me. But I think... Oh, I can't use this shovel, though. I can't use that shovel. Wait a second. Uh, ah, right. This is filling. Okay. So, I think if I just go like this. Right? I have to use... A couple, I have to go a couple times to prime the system to get water bottles in there. But if I get a, a non enchanted shovel, efficiency five doesn't work where you can just like spam. Uh, and I think actually I'm going to need a footstool. There we are, a footstool to run the system. And then I could just go right here. I block this space so a block doesn't get placed. And we're making mud, tons of it. I can make it all so easy. And this dropper down here, it's feeding, well, heck, it's feeding me dirt. It's giving me dirt as I go because of this redstone signal pushed through here. Trust me, these blocks flying all over the place. It won't happen. Um, it shouldn't happen. This is fine. Hey, how can I do for you today? I make a coffee for you, mud, mud brew. All right, I'll have to perfect this and clean this up a little bit, but yeah, yeah got a couple of pieces. Got to get my, my proper spoon for uh, brewing, but I mean, come on now. This is a beautiful system. I can knock out, if I get the right shovel and I can just spam that, we can knock out so much mud so fast. So we'll have mud, terracotta, because if you put mud under, hurry, 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 hurry. I had to go get some stalactites. Ah, whoa, perfect fly king. Any block. I just put the mud right there, and then put a stalag, dripstone, right under here, and it's gonna drip, 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 and soon enough, one of these, or all of these, any second now, it just takes seconds, it won't take long. Here we go, we're on camera. We're on ca camera, everybody, this is live. I mean, it's actually not live. <laughs> uh, so I'll cut. And with the magic of editing, there you have it. We have a clay block right there. So that clay gets smelted and it turns into terracotta, which, you know, sometimes people got to go a long, long way in the nether to find the uh, terracotta area, farming area. So there we go. We're going to sell some great stuff out of here. Obviously, not totally complete. I have to finish the interior and the beauty of it. I have some plans. We're going to have... Uh, like any hipster coffee joint, we're going to have a little stage right here where people can get on and recite poetry. Maybe we'll hold a little hermit event where uh, we can uh, point and laugh at people. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We've got quite a bit to do here still uh, to get it finished up. But we got a lot done today. We got the beat-ups head shop all completed. 
and ready to roll, I can announce that to the hermits and we can start making cash and be interesting to see if anybody gets some of the ultra rares. I'm very excited. And then I still got to come up with a name unless I'm going to go with the, the, the wet dirt <laughs> place. Maybe that's what it is. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. But before we end the episode today, I wanted to take a quick moment to just honor the life of a Hermitcraft member that we've recently lost. TFC was a hermit in every sense of the word. But if I know him from watching his videos, I know he wouldn't want a whole lot of fanfare. Even though he spent most of his time down in the mines and we didn't see him very much, his presence is still going to be missed. In the description is going to be a link to a GoFundMe that his family has set up to help with funeral expenses. So if you are interested, if you knew TFC or if he touched your life in any way, I encourage you to check that out to help them. Uh, but TFC, know that you will be missed by many.